talking about something that is very very tangible how to get started how do we do it what are the questions we need to ask I would like this to be almost like a dialogue so think about this session as a workshop think about this as, um, as, 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 as something that can give you ideas so, and challenge me what I don't want to see happening is I stand here for 45 minutes or, or so and I start talking about what I think and then you say okay I disagree you know it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. That would be the worst session. What I want you to do is to engage me. So when you engage me, just stop me. And if I keep talking, throw something at me. Because that's the only way you can stop me. I talk a lot. So uh, with that, I want to start. And today's session is about how do we get started and how do we keep going using unified communications. It says easy as one, two, three. I, I'm an honest man, I have to admit. I, I lied a little bit. It's not easy as one, two, three. It's a little bit more complicated. But we need to make it easy. We need to make it easy for end users, and we need to make it easy for your organizations. So with that, um, let's take a, a look back at what unified communications is in real life, and what it should be. And I think we all agree that when we're talking about unified communications, we talk about different types of rich collaboration, rich communications tools. I think we all agree that instant messaging and presence is something that should be included into unified communications. I think some of you might agree that contact centers solutions are something that is not included in unified communications. And I want to challenge those of you who think that way. It should be one part of unified communications because the way we work with customers is changing. And because it's changing more towards a collaborative relationship be between your companies and your end users, the contact center part should not be an isolated island within your unified communication stack. I also think we all agree that video communications or video conferencing is a part where that should be an integrated part of unified communication. And of course, IP telephony. The real life situation, however, is that by just working with customers, I have seen very, very few customers who actually have this stack. They have a lot of these elements in place, but the problem that many of, of my customers are facing is that they have bought these different types of unified communication solutions at a long period of time, and they're finding it really, really hard to make it unified. And as a result, there's a mismatch. There's, there's very big issues between integrating, for example, instant messaging and contact centers. And as a result, if you're IT managers, most of the time you will tell your uh, business managers, no, we can't do that. And when they say, we would like to have video communications, we want to use our existing video conferencing units in our contact center environment. Most of the time, an IT manager would say, well, we don't really support that because our contact center solution is a standalone solution. And that is a real problem. And it's a real problem because you can't get out of that situation where you are. Today I'm going to give you some tools and hopefully you will engage me in thinking about your own organization on, on, on how to do that. Video is one of the most striking and, and the most powerful unified communications tools out there. And the way we think about video quite often is desktop video. But we, sh we need to move beyond that and we need to think about video not in terms of endpoints, but we need to th think of, of video communications as different sort of areas where you use it. So when, when, when we start talking about later on, on, on what kind of integrations and what kind of, of rollout plans or migration plans you should be doing, you need to subscribe to the idea that video is not a standalone solution. Video is not something that you will run just on a desktop or on hardware endpoints. So I would argue that mobile and mobility should be an, an integral part of any unified communication solution relating to video. It should work on any device. It should work on any network. And you should be able to manage the same user licenses, be it on, on a mobile, desktop, meeting rooms, or more immersive solutions. So what, what I actually mean with that is these mobile devices, everybody loves them. People think, well, you know, let's, let's go mobile. Let's just start using mobile phones. I would urge anyone out there 
uh, who's an IT manager to be a little bit cautious because mobile phones actually break down. The lifespan of a mobile phone is what? Two years? Pretty much. And see what happens when you drop them, when you build your stand. They break. The problem here is, if this would have really broken down, I would be in serious trouble here. I would be, not be able to communicate with my, my out, uh, outside world. But because I have the same license, I can manage the same license on many different ways of communicating. I can use the same tools. I have the same features, be it mobile, on a desktop, or if I use some sort of larger meeting room solution. I would just log in, and I would have the applications. This is where we should be going. So going back to a situation where we don't have the full stack, that is not going to be possible. Because when you start deploying solutions from one vendor here and another vendor here, the integration becomes really complicated. And quite often, you end up buying multiple licenses, and it's going to be very expensive. Not to mention how difficult it is to move away from this scenario. So why should you care? Why is this important? Why is it important that we have a, a unified stack? And how do we build it? The importance here is we need to work smarter. Sorry about the small print. Unfortunately, looking at statistics, and we all think we work smarter, but in fact, we spend on average one full working day every week reading emails. Now, think about yourself two years ago or three years ago. How many emails did you get per day? 30 or 40 emails? I feel sorry for you. The average, by the way, the average American, I'm, I'm sorry, we only have statistics on, on US email usage. The average knowledge worker gets 105 emails today, every day. So I'm not surprised they spend 28% you know, of their full work time just reading emails. This is a really big problem. And if in, in this, although we're deploying this unified communication solution, instant messaging, video, and, and whatnot, the number of emails keep growing. And it's, it's really, really challenging. And this is why. Again, think a couple of years back how you worked. In fact, when we look at statistics today, and this is the statistics from Corporate Executive Board, 30% uh, of all people say they collaborate with 10 to 20 people just to get day-to-day -day work done. How can you do that by email? Now, think about your own people. If you're an IT manager, think about the business people out there. How many people do they actually need to communicate to get stuff done? 30% based on statistics would say, on an average day, just to get my stuff done, I need to work between 10 and 20 people. 30% say they work with more than 20 people. When you start adding this up, and if you do not have a unified communication stack, you are going to be in trouble because you will never get away from that email. Because that is the, the one thing that connects it all. The other problem is this trend is not going anywhere. 50% of all people in a recent survey said they don't think this is going to stop. It's going to keep increasing. The number of people we work with is going to grow. And because it's, go because it's going to grow, we kind of start gravitating towards the, the, the smallest common denominator, and that is often email. And we do that when we don't have solutions that can talk to each other. So if you think this was bad, wait till you see this. When asked, who do you work with, people work in different teams. Personally, the people I work with internally and externally um, consists of probably something like 10 to 15 or even 20 different teams that I belong to virtually. To be able to get my stuff done, I need to work with a lot of external people and I need to work uh, in many, many teams. I have different roles in the teams. In some teams, I'm a host. I'm the one leading the discussion. In another team, I'm an expert. In another team, I'm just writing notes and making coffee. The problem here is, if you think about your own situation a couple of years ago, Especially if you've been in, in the business for 10 or more years. Do you remember the time when most of the work you did was internal? Do you, do you still remember that time? Wasn't that fantastic? You had one person who communicated everything externally, normally a project manager. Then things started changing and, and people started to get more responsibilities and, 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 and we started to belong to these more virtual teams. And, and just looking at statistics, the people that on 63% 
of the people we work with are not located in the same location. This means for business that we are spending way, way too much time writing emails, and when we're not writing emails, we're traveling to meet our, our, our customers or partners and the team members. This is making business slow down. So from a productivity perspective, it kills productivity. 65% say they actually work with external partners, not only people who are geographically dispersed, but who are external. Then we start talking about things like federation. We start talking about things like security. What can we allow? And there, there's a lot of freeware stuff out there that people and just normal business users use to get things done. Things like, you name it, Dropbox. Anyone use it? Fantastic solution. Does your IT corporate solution, uh, corporate IT like it? Not necessarily. But people use it because they don't have alternatives. Because people, the, the, the way we work is so siloed. Our unified communication stack often is based on silos. Another solution that is freeware um, is, of course, Skype. Fantastic tool for a consumer. But for a corporate, security issues revolving around that. Can you manage users? Can you, can you take that solution and integrate it into other solutions? It's going to be challenging because the, limit, the, the options are limited there. The fourth thing uh, that actually adds a lot of issues when, when thinking about deploying something, thinking about building that roadmap for your IT, is the fact that we all go through reorgs. Business statistics, the average employee experiences a major change in the organization every seven months. So hands up everyone who has had a reorg during the last year. I had. You don't do reorgs in Estonia, I guess. But that's a real issue in, in many corporations. It's difficult to, to, to manage licenses in the unified communication stacks. It's difficult to build solutions when you don't know how many people are going to be in the organization and what the roles and responsibility of the different people are. And it's going to be difficult when you have video conferencing as one stack, you have instant messaging and presence as one stack, IP telephony is completely different, and then we have contact center as a, as a completely separate island. How are we going to make sure that we have a solution in place that covers these, all, these uh, all features. So just to recap a little bit, the key finding so far is that unified communications should be one solution. It should not consist of many different solutions. Work is getting interconnected more and more. So whatever you think is gonna, it's, it's somehow it's gonna be easier, no, it's gonna be more difficult to build these solutions. And we're cons uh, constantly challenged on the productivity side. So there are companies out there who think, well, why don't we bring one solution into the picture? Why don't we just give everybody like everything, something that would fit everyone? And, and the joke here, of course, is the, uh, with the Swiss army knife. By definition, if you look at it, it contains a lot of different solutions. It has a knife. It has a compass. It has a lot of things. So just by looking at the different boxes and features, it can do everything. So shouldn't we be giving away the same sort of tools for everybody in the organization when we don't know exactly what they're going to do? That's a solution that has uh, been used in, in some corporations. Sometimes it worked. Most of the time it doesn't. And the reason here is people are completely different. We do different things. We like to divide users up in five groups. Now you can, within your own organization, think about your own workforce. You can make your own categorizations of people. But I would like to divide them in in five categories. Mobile workers, office workers, executives, non-office workers, and experts. And the reason here is the way, the, 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 the logic in which these different users work is are just completely different. They need different types of resources. The way they communicate is different. The way they uh, act in meeting, the role in the meeting is very, very different. So having that Swiss army knife approach by giving away everything to everyone doesn't work. People will have different opinions of what makes them productive. So for a mobile worker, the applications they need is not necessarily something on a PC. They need something on a tablet. They need to have a good business grade tablet. From an applications perspective, what you need to make sure is that the application or the solution you, you choose needs to run on all 
platforms on Android or on iOS and so on. And the reason here is if they just break the tablet or if the contract for the tablet ends, you are in trouble if it's tied in to a specific operating system. Office workers. Again, uh, office workers is a, is a different breed. And there are different types of office workers. But what I mean with this type of office worker is the kind of people who are most productive by not moving anywhere, who actually probably would need to have extremely good communications tools. But because of, of cost issues and, and small budgets, actually, we can't afford to do that. You need to give them something that is basic, very, very basic, that works, that you can drop, and it doesn't break. Or you can replace it. So here we're talking about probably a, uh, I would say, knowledge worker that spends most of the time answering phone calls or making phone calls, that doesn't need to, to collaborate. So what about executives? Well, executives in a unified communication solution is someone who should be everywhere at any time on any network. It is their responsibility to be the supreme decision maker in conversations with customers, with partners, or internally. And for those, we need to be able to give the best possible tools. But we change executives. Executives change, uh, roles changes. So we need to have a way of, of managing the licensing and, and application stack of the executives. We have non-office workers. How many of you are in, a, in an environment where you have non-office workers, people who are in, in a dusty environment, in a factory of some sort? Those would be the kind of people who uh, need to have something that can break, that you can replace, or something that is uh, not personal. You don't want to give away things to a specific person. You want to manage uh, because you're going to have shifts. So if you have, a, a, for example, three shifts in a factory, you don't want to give, give away three different licenses because only one of those are going to be there at any given time. So you need one licenses, license that they share. You need one application that they share. Or you need one uh, endpoint that they share. Very, very different to executives. And experts need to be productive anywhere. So what are the four questions that you need to ask as an IT manager or as an end user that, that is sitting on a budget? What are the four key questions that you need to work on to be able to identify who belongs to which target group? who is an expert, who's a mobile worker, and so on. Again, the Swiss Army knife tactic doesn't work. You can't throw away everything at everyone. They're going to be confused. It's not going to work. You're going to have a lot of uh, issues supporting them if you're an IT manager. So the question, first question is, work with HR. Work with the team leaders in each of these categories. And if you make your own categories, fantastic. So the question is, what is the most optimal work environment? Let's take, for example, an expert here. And I think there's a lot of experts in this room. When you think about your own workforce or work day, what is the, where physically, where do you need to be to be the, the most productive in your work? I'm going to start bugging you, Sander, right? Yeah. So in the office, you would go to the office, and that's when you are most productive. Yeah, but uh, to, to, our, to, to our, our organization specifics, um, we are all, at some point, we are all have to be uh, non-office workers, and most of the time office workers, but we also have uh, to do some uh, work mobile. That is correct. So in, in a way, you would say, in fact, you are most productive here, thinking about it, but you need to have the ability to work anywhere. Yeah. That is the trick. How do you do that? How do you change a, 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 a basic need suddenly to become a very advanced need? You can't do it if you have siloed communication stacks. You need to have that unified communication stack. So the question is then, OK, so you need to have something that is available on any device, more or less. Then you need to choose in the background a licensing model that allows you to do that. The second thing you need to be aware of is the following. What is the type of work you do? What is your role, and, and how do you work in a meeting? Are you a highly collaborative person working with many, many teams? And based on the statistics, 63% of all people work in many, many teams. Are you an expert? Do you need to, to have some, a solution that allows you just to pick up your tablet and be there in, in real life, well, almost real life, on, on a video screen? Or is it mostly an 
uh, an expert type role where you have one-to-one -one communication. The reason why this is different is because you can save a lot of money by optimizing the hardware that you choose to run the application on. Do you follow my lead? Yeah. Now, where would you be as, a, as an example? So you would be almost like a one-one person here. And the role in the meeting, are you the person in the meeting that takes charge in the meeting, that sits down and looks people in the eye and says, by the way, Andres, you need to do this. And Marius, you do that. Not yet, but I'm hoping to go there. You're not yet. So let's say that you're not there um, and you are. At the moment, I think I'm somewhere between expert and participant. Okay. So one, one, three, for example. The, the reason why, again, the reason why this is important is we use video a lot for, for leading conversation. It's a completely different story to be in a meeting and only have audio. Think about yourself. You've been in, in meetings many, many times, and somebody's been on an audio line, and, and they're trying to tell you what you should do. It's so easy to not really listen or misunderstand, or perhaps actually actually misunderstand. When you're on a video connection, you can actually, a good full HD video connection, you can actually, as a, as a team leader, make sure that the team members that you have understand what you're saying. That's why you need to have that video connection. That's why you need to have tools that support different types uh, and different ways of communicating. The fourth one and final one is the question, how much money should we actually spend? How can we find a budget solution that does, that does all these things? Is the return on investment going to be extreme? For example, are you the guru in the company? That by just by, by being there, you solve all the problems? Or is it just a medium return on investment? Or is it even low? The question is, how much money should one spend on bringing you the tools to be as productive as possible? Medium? So, so what we do, and this is the first round of conversation when we talk to, to, to customers and team leaders and, and team members, we ask these questions and we add these points up and we say, if you get, for example, you, you would be almost like an anywhere worker, so you get one point, highly, no, you were participant, contributor, one. So let's take two to, to be on this. So that would be three points, you are an expert, that would be six points, and then plus three point mediums, you get nine points. You would have an advanced personal unified communication solution. So what you need in your work is a fantastic tool that is personal, that you can use from home, that you can use at the office, on any network. And in fact, based on this analysis, which is completely, of course, very, very rudimentary, it's very simplified, you would need to have a PC client, right? You will need to have the same, you don't have to use both devices at the same time, but when you turn it off and you need to, to, to work on a mobile phone, it needs to work. You need to be away, uh, it needs to be possible to throw away the mobile device and jump on a personal video endpoint. So going back here, let me just backtrack a little bit. Sorry. This is the kind of stack you need to be as productive as possible. Personal video endpoint for leading the team, for sharing information, and for actually seeing what they mean, and then some sort of mobile device to do it. You don't need in your work these kind of very, very fancy and expensive things. Perhaps the managing director of your company would need to have something like this. I don't know. He would be more productive. Maybe I need uh, those things uh, from time to time. That is correct. So you need, you need to, to actually, yeah, exactly. So we need to have a licensing stack in place that allows you to move between the different categories. You can't do that if you have a uh, unified communication solution for a number of different vendors. So let's hold you on. Let's go back to, to this. So how do you create the, the roadmap? How do you go from having a vague idea of what, what you kind of need to have when you set the goal for all these different people? How do you take it from, from current state to the desired state? How do you go from now to future? 
it depends on all your objectives. Um, your objective might be to work internationally. Your objective might be to make a lot of money. It depends really on the objectives and the timeline. I would argue that within IT, we have a tendency of wanting to fix everything like this. I would encourage you to think long term and really to start thinking beyond that next quarter, beyond that next year. And the minimum, in my world, the minimum timeline you should be thinking about is three years. But I would like to encourage you to think on a five-year term, because we are talking about unifying that architecture. So with these different types of application, instant messaging and presence, web conference, voice, video, contact center, and office applications, you need to actually combine all of these ways of communicating. With office applications, I, of course, mean mostly email, right? You need to be able to combine these into one logical plan that you present to your company. And what you need to do is you need to scope out your existing contracts. And here's just an example what you can do. For example, if you have a voice contract, what you need to do is you need to know when that voice contract for IP communication is going to end. So if it's going to end in two years, fantastic. It doesn't mean you don't have to make the changes. It needs you need to be prepared to make the changes. So two years from now, we would know that there's an opportunity to move away from your existing IP voice to a unified IP voice. And if you're running some sort of uh, freeware IM, mostly companies and small companies use uh, things like Skype or, or Gmail, what they need to do is they need to have an understanding of how quickly they can move away. It's easy just to send out an email to the organization saying, stop using Skype, move away from it. Now, the reality of life, it, it doesn't work that way. We need to educate people. We need to have instructions. We need to be able to support them. And normally, it can take anywhere between 6 to 12 months to get your organization's users to stop using something and start using something else. I would argue that because companies are so used to having something that is free, instant messaging and presence on a unified communication stack should be free. It shouldn't cost anything. You should have it on any device, and it should be completely free of charge. If you have a contact center solution, and you think, no, come on, this is a, a, an island of its own, don't think that way. Include it. When does the contract end? Is it in one year? Is it in five years? We, we, we need to work on understanding how we can integrate the contact center piece into the unified communication stack. And when does your Microsoft licensing end? How many are using Microsoft here, by the way, in the office? Everybody. We're using as well. The question is, when does it end? When can we, you move away, if needed, from the Microsoft stack, if you want to do that? You don't have to do it. But if, if there's a desire to do it because of saving money or because you want to try something else, another way of, of, of communicating, making yourself less depending on email, then you need to have it scoped out. And you need to be able to time it to the other um, application rollouts. Now, what can you get instead? You can get a lot of different solutions. But I would encourage you to find a solution that does all of these things. It is not the Swiss Army knife. It is the tool shed where you have different tools. So from a freeware, as soon as possible, and this is what I would encourage everyone to do, move away and teach your, and, and, and educate your organization to move away from free, siloed instant messaging and presence, to move on to something that is unified, that we can, we can, uh, we can include, we can uh, upgrade the instant messaging client to do things like HD video, web conferencing, um, PSTN, for example. And that works on any device. So that you get rid of this dependency on specific hardware or specific licensing. The web conferencing. That is, is, is funny enough when, when I spend time in the Baltics. Not many companies use web conferencing at all. It, it's a superb tool for bridging the gap between what you have and where you want to go. So that is something that, that I would encourage to be one of the first things to roll out and make sure it is something that you can integrate with future telepresence or video conferencing. Web conferencing should not be a standalone, an island of its own. It should be something you connect. Uh, and if you are out there and, and you know that your contract will end at some point, what you need to do is you need to, to talk to your service providers or telcos or, or, or partners and tell them that the unified communications voice service needs to be part 
of the different other ways of communicating. There are solutions out there. There are a lot of partners out there who not, do not necessarily want to, to provide this kind of service because it's, for them it's a little bit more complicated. But it's something that you need to do as a customer to be able to get that unified stack. The video service as well, something you can get for free is fantastic, but the quality, how do you integrate? You need to make sure that be, although you might think there's a big difference between video and voice, and it is, the other one shows images and the other one does not, from an IP perspective, it's the same, it's just bits and bytes. You need to be able to have that same license in place that you can manage as an IT manager to give you, for example, basic licenses, and when you need more licenses, you start pushing some buttons and you get more features. And also, um, I would encourage you to think about using Google Apps as well. Fortunately enough, there is a company who does this. It's called Atea, and that's why I'm here today to say that Atea has an offer that allows you to work smarter. You get that full stack. You, you don't get the Swiss Army knife. You get different tools that you need to be as productive as possible. Different types of video endpoints, basic, more advanced, and at a price that I think is superbly cheap to get started with. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, uh, but I would like to encourage you to come to the stand um, and, and take a look at some of the offerings that they have, because from a price perspective, to get started is really, really affordable. And you're able to get the kind of, of, of communications tools in place that will allow you to unify that stack, to get contact centers in, to get video communications in, to get instant messaging and presence. I like that one. To get good PSTN and HD video softwares at a really affordable price, and to be able to work with external companies. Because that's how we do. We work, and you work, based on statistics, with a lot of external companies. That's my presentation. Um, I open up now for uh, Q&As. Here you'll find my details, and if you're interested in knowing more about my thoughts around this and, on, and how I can help you bridge the gap from what you have right now to where you want to go, you can find me on these places, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. I have, a, of course, a, a Facebook page on Cisco Finland, and also a YouTube channel where, where I will be talking about these kind of topics. I do want to thank, uh, before we go into q and I was bothering you a little bit, so you're going to get a good present here. You're going to get a sheet, um, a towel, and some yeah. other things. Thank you. I have a lot of uh, stuff here, so anyone asking a question will get some. Fantastic. I want to give away stuff. So, I can also hear you quite fine. No questions? Uh, yes. So, yeah, network access. What it needs to do is, is it needs to, actually fantastic question. The thing that is making things a little bit complicated in many companies is VPN access. How do you make it secure? How do you make sure that when you, if you have a, like a hardware video endpoint, you don't need to have a dedicated router somewhere? The way it should work, and we do it by the way, but the way it wor should work on, on any solution is you just plug it in and it forms a secure tunnel all the way back to your edge. So a firewall basically. And it needs to be secure. So the VPN client, if you will, should be in included in the software in the application that you install on, on PCs or Macs, or, and, and that's how the network access it. You, and, and you only get, of course, access based on your login, username and password. And as an administrator, you'll be able to manage who has access to this remotely. To be able to manage the traffic, of course, there's uh, some licensing involved here as well. You can, you can actually um, limit the number of, of people who have remote access or, or actually concurrent access to allow 10 people to work remotely at the same time. Um, concurrently. Fantastic question, by the way. Make it secure. That's the, the answer. I have more presents I want to give away. If the question is, how am I doing today? That's fine as well. Yep. I, 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 I happen to have a mic. I have no questions. So I, I would like to ask a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Basically, what's going to happen in Estonia is that yeah, the trend in it, the trend is gonna to be over. Thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> the trend is gonna to be over uh, to move out of office. So people tend to move 
back to their offices again. And uh, what do I need, or any person, I need the next serious uh, device as what I can have in, in my office, but I would like to avoid uh, the laptop. So it's, the qu question is the convenience in Estonia. And, and basically, basically, this is how it actually is, to feel convenient and to have uh, the, the next serious device what you would have in office, because the distances are quite uh, short and you can't uh, uh, move quite far away either from your office or from your home rather, uh, rather than if you're not going to travel. That's it. So, so when you say people are moving back, more or less back to the office, are you saying people do both? I, I didn't quite get that. So would you like to have something that is, is a shared resource at the office or something you can bring with you all the time? Uh, I, of course, to, it's important to bring something with me, yeah. but, but the trend is and, and uh, the desire is to avoid the, uh, uh, the laptop yeah. because it's not so convenient any longer. The convenience is important. The, the, th there's one device that I've seen that is actually fully capable of, of doing what you're, you're, you're telling. Um, there are actually two devices. Of course, iPad is one and you, you can add accessories to it. The problem with iPad is, of course, uh, it's, it's a little bit expensive. There are a lot of things related to that. Um, but, but Samsung, uh, there's a, a, a tablet, which is called Note Pro. And the Note Pro, you can actually, it has a lot of power in it. So you can run very, very CPU um, unfriendly applications as well. And, and that's something that, and, and also to buy accessories like keyboards and cameras and, and things like that to that. And do, do you think it, 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 has, it does have power enough to have the next series so to, uh, uh, and competitive device uh, uh, comparing to what I have in office? Absolutely. I, I definitely think it will. But I, I def and also think that from an office, Microsoft Office application perspective, sometimes it actually might make sense to move to a Google app uh, scenario where the application that you use are not running locally on your, your device, but are actually uh, running uh, in the cloud um, to be able to sort of get rid of that. Uh, the good thing with iPad, I mean, Microsoft just announced um, Office for, for iPad, so, so you can also have uh, an iPad for that. The, the, the thing I would like to say, though, is the, the, the limitations of having a tablet is that you, you are on a device that is mobile, so it will shake. And the camera is, you cannot compare the camera, uh, which is very, very small, with, with not very s superb optics, to something that you would have on a PC. And I'm now talking about these types of, of uh, good grade HD cameras with good optics. You can't compare it. So if you're in a situation where it is where you actually need to be seen, and you need to see the other person really, really well, then I would say you need to have um, a supplement device. Personally, I have a couple of video endpoints. I have a, a personal video endpoint at home that I use. And the reason why I use it is, is because it's, it, it's so much more powerful to talk to people that you can see in high definition or full HD, and they can see you in full HD. Uh, but when I, when I travel, I have something else. I don't bring it with me. Note Pro is the answer. Any more? I have stuff I want to give, get rid of. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what was the name of the software that you provi uh, provided or, or uh, demonstrated? And uh, uh, is it uh, available on every device? Or yeah. So the software name is called Jabber. Uh, if you're talking about the, the Jabber device that will give you instant messaging and present on, and, and HD video. And yeah, yes, yeah, yes. It's called Jabber. Uh, and Jabber is, is, a, is a software that will register on a server. The server is called Cisco Unified Communications Manager. When you get the Unified Communications Manager, everybody in your organization gets uh, instant messaging and presence for no cost at all. It's free. We give it away. Depending on the need you have, you can then assign licenses to individual people. Again, remember those five user groups. So if you are, 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 are uh, an expert, for example, you are an expert, uh, and you want to have HD video and PSTN audio, what we do, and you only need one device, 
We, we assign a, a specific license to you that will give you that. If you then later on need to have two devices, we enable a, a, a separate upgrade to that license, which will allow you to get two devices. If there's a second person in your company that needs this, but you don't actually need that second device anymore, we can take away the license and move it to someone else. So it's a question of managing the licensing base to enable different features and functionalities. You can use the same if you want to stop using Jabber, for example, and just go back to using instant messaging and presence. You can take that license and you can have a video endpoint assigned to you personally. The flexibility of moving back and forth between the different ways of communicating is the power when your unified communication stack is unified. Jabber is the name of the application. Thank you. Yes. Quickly getting rid of this. Thank you. Um, does uh, this Jabber has a bridges to other systems? For example, for if our customer service is using uh, Jabber and uh, we uh, want uh, to offer a possibility that uh, the customer is using uh, Skype or whatever, can, can they do that? Yeah, so <coughs> Skype is a little bit difficult because it's, it's closed and they only right now do direct integration with Microsoft Link. What you can do, which is fantastic, you can actually build a bridge in between. So a, 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 a um, um, what do you call it? Um, well, a bridge where you can dial from different systems and you do H.264 and you do you know, different types of, of, of video codecs and standards and, and do that. There are a couple of providers out there. Um, there's a company called Akano that does it. There's a company called Blue Jeans that does it. And those are the, the kind of companies, if you want to communicate between different standards, you need to have that bridge. Now, I would also be a little bit worried, or not worried, cautious, a word of caution for everyone, anyone thinking about having um, non-standard integrations in place between different vendors, native integration. What about software upgrades? How are you tying yourself as an IT manager to having specific software being upgraded on a continuous basis, and you need to do it on, on both sides? So, and that, that is where I think it's a better scenario and a, a smarter thing to have a neutral um, you know, um, bridge in between that will allow you to dial in instead of, of, of locking yourself to a specific, uh, int I would say, um, non-standard integration. Thank Thanks for the answer, for the qu well, uh, question. Do you know any, uh, I have one more. Companies will practice that the unified process. Uh, if we want to have some little more information, how, how, what, why they uh, start using it, or, or what are the problems? So, do you have any like, names of the companies we could like uh, contact with? Who, who does consultancy? Uh, what companies are using that or practicing that unified process? Oh, oh, you mean like who has everything in place? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We have a lot of these companies. And one of the best ways of, 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 if you want to have, like, ask them, how does it, you know, we had this guy from Cisco coming up and he said it's fa fantastic. Does it really work? Right. Yeah, so we can provide you with, with, with this kind of uh, people who can do it. With, no, I mean, you know, case studies. Case studies are always a little bit skewed in one direction. But I mean, really, sit down with the customer and talk about it. Absolutely. Are there like many companies in the region or in Estonia? In Estonia, not that many, actually, to be honest. Uh, the, the companies who are doing this are, tend to be a little bit bigger organizations um, who have understood that the only way this, they can succeed is, is to, to be able to unify it. The biggest reference we have, and I, I, do, I know it's a big reference, but it's, it's Nokia Siemens Networks. And Nokia Siemens Networks, Funny enough, uh, was acquired by, well, Nokia and Nokia Siemens Networks were, were kind of um, intertwined. Then Nokia Siemens Networks moved away, and uh, they are actually, they are, their stack is unified. So they, uh, they have these solutions in place. Any more questions? I have lost this, I'm going to give away. If not, I'm going to give it to you. Thank you very much. Have a great uh, time. Go to the stand, get those uh, stickers, and win a Galaxy S4.